Hi everyone, I'm Carl from Cedar Auto. This is Coffee Economics with Carl. Today we're going to be talking about producer profit. So far in the series on transparency, we've dug through just about everything there is to be transparent about in the coffee supply chain, from farm gate price, supply chain costs, currency exchange rates. The last two episodes were about the cost of actually producing coffee. So now if you're analyzing a coffee supply chain and you've been able to follow along and access all the information that we've been mentioning, especially farm gate price and the farmer's production costs, you're able to figure out how profitable a farm is, or at least the profit margin per unit of output. So if this entire transparency crusade has led us to this point, to make sure that farmers are being compensated in a way that allows them to prosper, whatever that means, the question then becomes, how much should farmers earn? My first response to that would be, who are we to decide? Another way of looking at this would be to ask the question, how much do farmers need to earn in order to dot dot dot, on the most basic level, how much do farmers need to survive? How much do they need to keep farming? How much do they need to be earning in order for their children to continue farming if that's something that they're interested in? How much do they need to earn to be content? Whatever that means. I think all this boils down to the notion that's a slippery one of what is a living wage, which of course is going to be different for everyone. There are a lot of different proxies we can use. One that I saw used recently was a legal minimum wage per uncompensated adult who depends on the farm for income. Whatever this number is, and however we decide to calculate it, let's just call it a sustainable income. I know sustainable is becoming a tricky word to use these days, but for the sake of this calculation, let's just say that this is the income that's economically sustainable for the coffee producer and their family to live in a way that makes them happy. If you've seen all the previous episodes in the series already, you probably already know what calculation I'm going to do right now, but let's just do it anyway for those who haven't. So let's start with the farm gate price. Of course, a topic that we've explained thoroughly, so if you've forgotten, you can go back and review. Minus production costs, that will give us profit per unit of output times units produced, will give us total profit. Now the big question, is this total profit equivalent to whatever we define as a living wage? Let's look at this a little different way. Let's take a look at the calculation that would need to happen in order to figure out what price a roaster needs to be paying in order for a farmer to be earning a living wage or sustainable income. This time let's work backwards. Let's start with the sustainable producer income or living wage. Divide this by the average number of units produced. This can be done in a very specific sense for one farm or it can be done in a very general sense taking average numbers such as the average farm size and yield for the population of producers that you're considering. Dividing the sustainable income by the average number of units produced will give us the sustainable profit per unit. So this is not the per pound sale price that the farmer needs. This is what they need to end the year with. This is the bottom line number after all said and done that they need to be able to live happily. To this sustainable profit per unit number, let's add the production cost. This is the amount of money that farmers actually need to bring in. So this would be the sustainable farm gate price. Then adding in supply chain costs and the margins of all of the service providers adding value to this supply chain will give us the sustainable roaster price. Let me rephrase that, the minimum sustainable roaster price. As we've seen in the series so far, there are a lot of variables and fluctuations in the supply chain. Things are always changing and the farmer's bottom line is the one that's most often affected. So this number here really should be considered a minimum. A minimum in order to ensure that based on whatever calculations we're making, assuming that they're absolutely perfect, is going to allow the producer to keep farming coffee. But it probably isn't going to make it extraordinarily attractive. The fact that a roaster pays this price, whatever it may be, is also, as we've mentioned, no guarantee that the sustainable profit per unit number is actually going to arrive to producers. Maybe not in order to ensure that it does, but in order to determine whether it is or isn't is why we need price transparency in the supply chain, as we've already mentioned so many times in the series thus far. 
in order to have these numbers that we're inputting in order to figure out how we need to be behaving because that's really the point of this whole notion of price transparency. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. This may or may not be the end of the transparency series. We'll see what else comes into my head from now to next week. Uh, as always, if Ed, this has brought up any additional questions or you need clarification on anything, please feel free to leave in the comments here. And if there are any other ideas related to transparency in the coffee supply chain that we've not yet dealt with in the series, please remind me. I'd love to make sure that this is thorough and complete before we move on to something else. If you find this kind of content useful, please consider subscribing. Transparency in the coffee supply chain is only the first series in this coffee economics channel. We have a lot of other topics we're going to be getting into from here, and I hope you'll join us.